Hello and welcome to Boom In Your Face, a platform for indie artists and musicians to come and share their new music or projects, as well as discuss topics about the music industry and the community at large. Boom In Your Face has two meanings. One is that boom in your face from the music that you're listening to, but the other boom in your face is when someone assumes the situation is one way and boom in your face is totally wrong and something totally different. So on occasion, we discuss those boom in your face moments, so watch out that someone might be you. Listeners, if you'd like to share your boom in your face musical projects, or share your boom in your face moments, or just want to join us in the conversation, reach out and email me at boominyourface616 at gmail.com, or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter, like, subscribe, and share the episodes. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Boom Your Face podcast. I wanted to um, let you introduce yourself and give a little bit of your background. So my name is Jade L. Jones, and um, I am a full-time professional performer. Uh, my background, I am a graduate of University of Central Florida with a um, bachelor's in business management, which I am technically not fully using right now because I have decided to go into the world of performing art. So uh, I've been performing for about maybe, uh, I would say I've, my anniversary is, I, I was claimed that 2017 was probably when I became a full-time performer, but of course I've been doing um, community theater and other things definitely before then. So I've been performing for quite some time now, done a, a lot of things across Central Florida. Some of my favorite theaters that I've worked with, I've worked in uh, Delana at Athens Theater. That was the place I got my first um, lead role. I've worked at um, Garden Theater, St. Luke's which um, is a church, but they have an amazing theater department because majority of their members are performers. Okay. So even though they're like community theater, but their stuff is like phenomenal. I'm sure. <laughs> they're giving you some real stories with some twists and turns of life. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did a garden, garden of Eden. Right now there, I think they're doing Oliver there now. All right. So now you, before we even go any further, I must tip my hat to you because you are phenomenal in your whole being, in your actor's uh, spirit. You are in that. You have taken on a role and you took me out of the everyday mindset and put me into the place, the character, the atmosphere. Was You just took me there. And it was nothing to do with, it didn't seem calculated. It was just natural for you in your character that you was being that day. And which is the key to being a wonderful, phenomenal actress is to be in that character, really live the character that you're doing and have, and make everyone believe that. And you excellent at that. You did that for me. So I want to say that I'm glad that you are pursuing the career that you thought was going to be your plan B, but it became your plan A. And that the only thing, you are using your degree because you're saying you are doing business. And now you're just yeah. fully aware of the business side of it, right? So you're an actress that knows her business both ways. <laughs> So I commend you on that because you're excellent. Thank you. So now, mm -hmm. so now tell me what type of character do you like most to play? Even though I know you're open to all. Or are you open to all? I'm open to a lot of, there's still some things I still haven't tackled yet. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be a villain. I really, that's the next thing I want to be. A villain? Yes. Okay. Usually I get the the good person roles Mm -hmm. or, you know, I get the motherly roles and then- gotten the drama and then I've gotten the the happy you know go lucky person the bubbly person Mm -hmm. so now I I want to I want to stretch again and do something a little easy villainous Uh (laughs) all right so maybe in your in between times you might write that role for yourself Mm. all right boom in your face you know I'm gonna give it to you Mm -hmm. So tell some of the plays and the characters that you've played in, how you prepared yourself for those roles or what is your Um, thing that you do to get you ready? So um, more so like, so for character development, um, Mm -hmm. usually I try to definitely have to read through the script. 
to know right. what the whole thing is about and know what this character's, what their focus is right. before I can actually build up the character itself. Um, usually with the motherly roles, mm -hmm. my go-tos of people who I think about and start to kind of piece into those characters, like Felicia Rashad, yes. amazing. Of course, mm -hmm. you know, mother of all, one of the best mothers, TV moms, you know, <laughs> like queen of mothers, mm -hmm. you know, and then also, um, of course, my own mother, thinking of how she raised me, she's a little bit of Claire Huxville as well. Okay. And then my grandmother. So mm -hmm. between those three women, a lot of times I've added them into um, the characters along with a little bit of myself right. in developing a lot of those motherly roles. I would say for um, when I did Sister Act, um, Dolores Van Cartier <laughs> for that character of course you know that's a that's a character that you cannot play around with people think you can play around but I'm like no that was Whoopi that's so right I was exactly like, I can't be Whoopi mm -hmm. I can't be Whoopi but I still have to keep in mind it's a comedic character and thinking about those those pinpoints where um, where the jokes have to land. Each character takes a little bit of um, just research, finding out what themes they personally have to deal with in the the play or the musical to determine, you know, what things that I need to work on. Is it something that comes natural to me, or is it something that I have to do a little more research on? So, right. like with the last with the role that you saw me in as um, Ella mm -hmm. um, in the play number six, for that one to be a mother of a um, daughter who's on the spectrum, right? Um, I'm so glad they actually brought in um, a fellow actress friend, a person mm -hmm. that I've worked with who has who deals with autism, okay. and you know, hers is on a light, on a, on a little, not as, uh, um, as extreme, but she, right. she was able to give a breakdown of a lot of the information and the different variations and parts of it mm -hmm. that really made it more, that made it make sense on how to better deal with somebody who is on the spectrum. Right. Okay. So gotcha. at that part, I really had to do research and looking into that. And she gave us a lot of information that I read through a lot of that, those details to mm -hmm. make sure that I was being authentic right. and how a mother would deal with an autistic mm -hmm. child and, well, that's you know, great. only yeah. having help at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful to be sensitive to that topic because it is a struggle that most mothers don't talk openly about you know, when they are struggling with loving their child, right? And then seeing their child not be able to communicate the way they would want them to communicate or feel that they're struggling to get things out. So yes, it was very um, great of y'all to have done the research, really get authentic information, like you're saying, about a person that's in that, handling that, playing a mom of an autistic child. You did very well in representing a mother in that scenario because you have to have a different skill set of patience understanding love even probably more abundant love because to make sure you're, it's communicated to your child on the love bond that you have now you did bring up whoopi right. now whoopi go, that's like you say when you took on that character role of whoopi on sister you know the show must go on <laughs> and the words yes. you live by every day mm -hmm. so, oh, whoopi man. i don't know if you do or don't know Whoopi's background began in theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because she had that one woman show she did, ironically, that was a mm -hmm. Broadway hit for a long period of time. Do you know what you're referring to? On her Broadway show beginning, that she mm -hmm. was doing a one woman character show that she wrote, and it became the, one of the um, running top running shows on Broadway back when, I'm saying about in the 80s, maybe something like that, in her beginnings. Yeah. And so, yes, you had to take it very seriously because, you know, even though Whoopi makes it look very easy, that's the key. They're doing right. so gracefully that it looks so easy that everyone says, I can do it. And then until you get put to the test, then you're like, okay, maybe not so much. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> so absolutely it's about being able to make it seem so seamless and easy and natural mm-hmm. that's the key to the artistry yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah definitely so what type of character are you playing current so i am uh in ohio right now i okay. am working at cedar point uh park mm-hmm. theme park they call mm-hmm. it they are the roller coaster capital of america oh, really? uh, yeah they got some good rides here now mm-hmm. um so they have oh. some amazing shows too okay so the show that i am in is called lusty lil's liberation mm-hmm. in the palace theater in the back mm-hmm. of the park in the area is called frontier town okay so my, i play lusty lil mm-hmm. i am the owner as my as my assistant says i am the owner and proprietor <laughs> the the uh uh, songbird of sandusky Mm -hmm. okay (laughs) so i am i own a saloon or you know i own this palace theater it's a um, country western style um, all right bar style theater Mm -hmm. and myself and my co-host sam we uh are putting together we have this whole grand show that is honoring the the past performers of okay. Lusty Lills. Mm-hmm. And so I have three can can girls. I was gonna say do you have some can can girls. So you, you got of to my course, next you question. Gotta have yeah. Yes, I mm-hmm. got three can can girls. I got a barbershop quartet. Okay. I got a yes. Piano player, stride mm-hmm. piano player. That's and, right. And a drummer. So mm. that's that's our show. And yeah. I I it's it's I, I love it because it's so, it's that corny mm-hmm. kind of family friendly funny right. type of show, and it's funny how God works because every time I asked at one point I was asking I was like you know I want to stretch I want to do drama I want to do some drama he hit mm-hmm. me with a bunch of drama and I got like back to back to back shows of drama and I was like okay right. I'm sick of drama now I want to laugh some, <laughs> right? I want to laugh I want to have some fun I want to mm-hmm. crack some jokes and right. so I've been it all summer doing some corny jokes and some great songs and love that it. are hilarious. So yeah, so I'm singing and dancing and okay. um, I'm having a good time. I love this show. Um, they are, they do have um, some recordings on YouTube. So I can, I can even send you one so you can take okay. a look at it. Yeah, and I'll send, put the link up for people to be able to get to it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's a really good show. We have a lot of repeaters to our show. Like we have some people who have season passes that come consistently. <laughs> right. And they're like, we love this show every time. We just can't get enough. I'm like, we are so glad you come. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, but you know, some people don't think about the uh, season pass holes because I've been one for many years and going to the shows with the kids. And I look forward to the shows because you got to take the kids on all the rides. And most of them I'm not going to get on. But I love being able to go to the shows and, you know, it's just like you're at the theater, right? Because you are. So you're getting getting the kids entertained, you're getting entertained. Actually, the whole family's being entertained at the same time. And it also introduces the kids to theater that aren't really around it or really touch it. Absolutely. Yes, Yes, because I'm a big theater buff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We get, yes. and we have, I love that um, at the end of our show, well, usually our first and second show, we do get a chance to go out and we kind of wave to the guests and thank them for coming as they're heading out. And so sometimes we get people who say they have been coming to this show for years. Some who right. said they've worked in the park years ago and they're so excited mm-hmm. that, you know, the show is still, still going exists. on and mm-hmm. that it's changed, it's even evolved and gotten bigger and better. You know, right. some of them, I've been blessed to hear them say like, oh, this is the best little show I've seen. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're doing so, your job. There you go. You know, right. so I, I'm excited about it. I love this show. And even one guy, he told me that him and his wife met through theater. And so okay. they've been bringing their children to mm-hmm. the show like every year that they come to um, Cedar Point to come to the park in the summer. And they right. always come the children to the show and that's how they first introduced their children to theater Mm -hmm. and now their children just are in love with it so it it, it, people want to look down on theme park theater or theme park shows not realizing it it serves a purpose and it has exactly Mm -hmm. theater is theater all over the place i mean you you'd be amazed right but i'm not amazed coming to a amusement park to get a great show because i was raised up going to disney so Every time you came to Disney, you had a show in 
you know, incorporated into it. Right. So, but I mean, so maybe that might have been what branched out to all the other parks to wisen up that the adults definitely want some type of entertainment in that way to stimulate their mind and keep them going through that park for hours, sitting there, right, <laughs> waiting on them lines for them rides and they could get, oh, go yeah. see that show. At the end and it's an escape from the heat. Mm-hmm. It's an escapism, yes. Yeah. Come in with their drinks and food and get the kids mm-hmm. sit, sit down, get out of the hot sun, right. eat catch a nice little show while you're mm-hmm. eating and yeah it's a full day of it it's really an amusement park in that sense because you really get amused with different levels mm-hmm. so that's the key and the success to it and you're part of the, the bringing in of that support mm-hmm. so after this do you have your next gig set up or you're just waiting to hear or what are you reaching um, for asp- aspiring for um right now i don't have anything definitive mm-hmm. set up Okay. Um, when I'm done, I'm going back to Orlando, getting back into my normal hustle and bustle. Okay. But of course, while I've been here, it, the hustle doesn't stop because even I've been self-taping, like I have my friend's ring light because I flew up here, so I didn't pack my own, but I right. have my friend's ring light. So I've been doing self-tapes. Uh, matter of fact, when we're done, I'm going to get back <laughs> on to another right. self-tape <laughs> because well, now okay. we're getting into the holiday season. So, right. you know, this is the time when auditions are taking place for um, theaters and for um, other uh, corporations to have their their offerings. So their auditions for their offerings. So I'm preparing right. uh, self-tapes. Luckily, I've gotten callbacks for a couple of places. So I'm doing self-tapes to do that. I'm trying mm-hmm. still, I'm always still trying to go across seas. Okay. So I'm trying to get over to Asia. That's where I really want to go. Oh, I really want to okay. Asia, so. mm-hmm. no, you sound so. like my children. They all say they want to go to Asia, which is, I'll be going right with them. But yes, that's the new thing. That's odd. And I would say even more so in our culture of late, that that has risen to the curiosity and the love and acceptance of wanting to explore it, yeah. which is a beautiful thing because mm-hmm. you should be open to the world because we're all connected. So it's yeah. a beautiful thing if you really reach out and, you know, just experience something totally different, which it will still oh. actually surprise you. It's like, really the same yeah, so that yeah. is wonderful so we're going to speak that to existence child because you are going there and i'm coming to get the tickets to see yay mm-hmm. yeah that's what we're right Why, go out there at the same time come on come mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. definitely yeah, yes i love to travel i love to travel and so i do too mm-hmm. i think the lord had gave me like a taste of it and i'm like um <laughs> I'm okay. all in. <laughs> you show me that you can combine all my loves, being mm-hmm. able to pay bills and make money. That's right. And travel. You showed me. So now <laughs> you can't go back on your word now. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, just keep walking in your truth 